Hello and welcome to Grant Homecoming. See what's next for Grant, aka the roadmap to Grant's future. We gotta go over the entire thing and see what it means for all of us. <clears throat> and it starts by a letter by Martin Ivinsky, by the dev team. How much he loves Grant and loves winning, I'm sure the net deckers can relate. And he hates getting his ass whooped. Bit of an oversharing there, but he only played 350 hours. Those are some rookie numbers right there. I'll be uh, hesitant to admit that. <clears throat> anyway, while fighting with the everyday reality of regular updates and content drops, we lost sight of what was unique and fun about the game. So they're saying that uh, they felt pressured to put out content, and uh, they put out content that they deemed to be subpar, and they never accepted good enough at their company, and they got a plan to put out awesome content because they listened to feedback, and they call this project uh, Gwent Homecoming. They want Gwent to kick some serious ass and reignite our passion for Gwent. But there's one kicker. Only one. It's gonna take them six months of fully focused development. Six months. In the meantime, there's gonna be a cosmetic uh, update. A including the premium cards and one in May that's gonna balance the game including War Dancer and a new approach to create and six months is a long time kinda making my point for me now I can give them some credit for willing to take six months to execute their vision uh, of Gwent 2.0 but six months is a long time, and I would say, like, yeah, they put out some possibly subpar content, but they are probably about to make their biggest mistake yet, is not trying enough to put out content. Because people are just like, okay, you put out content, it's not the best, like, that's what everybody does. If the content kind of sucks or needs fixing, you just do that, you just remove it or, like, fix it, that's kind of how it goes. And, uh... And taking six months off to execute their vision is uh, it's just it's just a lot. It's gonna be very taxing on the player base. Probably a lot of them will quit. Maybe the game won't be dead, but it's gonna be a big one. Also, let's just look at their probably most criticized patch. It's the midwinter patch. However, I would say that wasn't their mo most criticized thing ever. What was the most criticized uh, uh, action they've taken is the silence after the midwinter patch. And I'm pretty sure that most players didn't expect this kind of uh, statement or project uh, or whatever we call this uh, from the devs. They kind of expected a woohoo, we got content! That's kind of it. Uh, <clears throat> That's, that's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what people were really hoping for. And even Midwinter Patch. What was wrong with it? Crate was a bit of a mixed bag. Some, some loved it, others not so much. I think it was a perfectly fine thing to try. And uh, it was a bit criticized because it was a bit swingy in, in, in Gwent. And I suppose uh, uh, players prefer more skill. But I think as far as RNG goes, Crate is one of the best ways to, to get it as well. And also there was a big problem about spies, that everyone just copied spies uh, and created spies and whatnot. And that was terribly handled because uh, spies, card advantage spies are OP. Like if you look at Aquist, is Aquist OP? Is Siri OP? Anyone? Raise your hands. Are spies OP? Yep. Yep. Everyone has them in their deck. Only those don't have it that uh, use Altus Double Cross to pu pull out the key unit. And they try to fix spies by uh, changing summoning portal, summoning circle. They are not allowing uh, spies to be created. Uh, that, that was a thing as well. So... Yeah... That wasn't really the best 
solution right there. Like spies are OP, you change the other cards around that, so only one spy can be played, but spies are still auto include. That was that was a really missed opportunity right there. Like there was a no more obvious patch to really highlight that spies are OP, and they kind of failed uh, to recognize it. So, I don't know. But I would say that overall the midwinter patch wasn't that bad. It had Shoop in it, that's awesome. He's my favorite card. He's a great card, but also it's not too RNG. It's it's really fun. It it, it has its own archetype, so I don't know. It was, it was a good time. But they got a plan to make Gwent awesome. And uh, let's just see. The thing is, this patch must be the bomb. It must be right. Every single point must be amazing. Like, without question, should be positive uh, for everybody. They got a plan to turn Gwent into a battlefield. When you play Gwent, you are the leader of an army from the world of the Witcher. We want to put more effort into reflecting that in-game mechanics and visuals. As an example, we would like to introduce preferred rope for some cards that would grant them additional benefits when put on that row. Also, rows in front and back would always grant different buffs when it is placed there. So, this seemed to promise more decisions in game. However, in reality, almost all the time, people would put their units on a specific row to get that specific buff they want. So, the best example is uh, when they remove row lock. They remove row locked, uh, that actually allow players to make more decisions in game. It, it somewhat took away the decision making in the, the, uh, the deck builder, because you didn't have to consider that as much, that your units are locked to a certain row. But it allowed more decisions in game, and it was uh, received uh, negatively, because it took away decision making in a way. Like, where you put your units in game is pretty much a no brainer. And uh, this is not necessarily a positive one either. Because most of the time people are just gonna put it on their row, but which gives the appropriate buff. And uh, units that have a preferred row, or like units change based on rows, uh, that's not exactly desirable as well. Units that are, that have very narrow uh, usefulness are great. For example, like X Men, like X Men, you can put it on any row and only affects the the opposing row, and the X Men gets strong. If the X Men had like a an effect that like, oh, but you know, if it if that doesn't work out, you can get like plus five points on your X Men in exchange for your ability. Is that is that great or plus six points in exchange for your ability? Like it either works out or you just drop down a twelve. Is that is that good? That would just make the unit boring. Like, if you only have that X-Men, you have to make that X-Men work. If you have like a plan B for the guy or like uh, whatever, then it's it's not good. It's just boring. It makes the unit more generic. I'm not saying this change is necessarily bad, but I'm just saying that it, it's probably not as good as they hope it to be. And it could be uh, possibly bad. Just as it's as getting rid of Rolock turned out to be a bad choice, this could turn out to be a why bother choice. And could even just make the units more generic. So I'm not sold on the first point. Upgrading the board. Currently, rows don't have direct impact on gameplay. If we count the hands of both players, we are looking at 8 rows in total. Our greatest visual assets, card art and premium versions of cards, are too small to shine in the current view. What we are aiming for is a complete overhaul of the visual experience. Redesign will have, will leave no stone unturned. We are even considering cutting one of the rows and leaving only melee and range. 
it's still something that requires extensive testing, but we are that serious about making things work. Up until this point, I just thought like, okay, whatever, improve the visuals if you can. But we are even considering cutting one of the rules, leaving only melee and range. Now, if this uh, change was made for gameplay reasons, it could be justifiable. But I would say it's it, it should be very, very seriously considered. If, uh, well, considering that the game was already out for some time, people are just used to uh, having uh, free rows on their side. <clears throat> And uh, the cards are balanced uh, in such a way as well. But considering cutting one of the rows for cosmetic reasons, that's just unacceptable. That's completely stupid. So I'm not sold on this one. Fixing the coin mechanic. I would not even put it there. But I suppose it's just a hot topic. There's the thing that I... like. I just joined the close beat and I'm like, man, they still haven't fixed that. Ah, oh, no matter, they're gonna fix it in like a few days. Well, little did I know. Do I really need to read that? Currently going second can give players a significant advantage. Really? They're gonna fix the coin flip? Now, I more have a problem with their approach. Like, you are, well... For a long time, they kind of ignored the coin flip. They're kind of still ignoring it. They are testing possible solutions. The thing is, they could have tested like 20 different solutions in game. Any kind of advantage that would have mitigated the disadvantage of going first would have been preferable to what we have right now. And I think they could have just simply just changed the specific solution to a better one if uh, a better one presented itself to them but they chose to have nothing and that's just terrible so I would rather see them uh, try and 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 make mistakes maybe or just not get as close rather than do nothing uh, revamping player progression kind of pointless it doesn't affect anything focusing on skill and player agency we heard you discussing the create mechanic. At first we thought it would be an interesting addition to the game, but as time passed we realized that this form of wide RNG is not something that fits our focus on player skill. We will be extra careful with these type of mechanics in the redesign process. That said, if you manage to find some cards interesting enough to include, but too crazy for ranked, they will still have their place in arena and casual mode. Again, I say... Crate was a totally fine thing to try out. It's okay that uh, some people feel like it's it's too wide. Like it was a totally thing, totally fine thing to uh, try out. And uh, I suppose the players uh, want uh, a more skill-based uh, game. But I'm kind of surprised that Crate gets such a hate. But like, for example, like Arcus Sport doesn't. Like it doesn't get any more random than that. 7 power, jump to a random row, damage a random enemy, damage a random enemy when he dies? Really? That's fine? Like, Crate least gave you some options. Crate really, well, I suppose Crate really got the big hit because uh, the pool of cards it created from was wide. And, and it resulted in Crate cards being swingy, but I suppose People don't remember the times where, like, oh, crit kind of sucked for my opponent, but, like, they remember the times, like, bam, better career, bam, swears on my neckers. Uh, those are the very really memorable times. We want Gwen to remain a deep game, uh, but I'm actually gonna touch on this topic at the uh, the end of the... the, the, pro the end of the project. We want Gwen to remain a deep game, where each faction has its identity and offers distinctive gameplay archetypes. We want rows to really matter in terms of gameplay, and gameplay itself needs to be engaging and rewarding. That's good, like add more complexity? That, that should be the focus to add, add to the game instead of just like, I don't know, add unnecessary things into the game, but actually add something of value. But this is kind of like 
okay. I can't really argue with that, like, fine. Uh, bringing back Witcher, more lore. And the Thronebreaker campaign will come out uh, at the same time with this uh, homecoming uh, a project. Now, this is a huge, huge news. So, for six months, Gwent will hibernate for the most part. Not much will happen. And uh, that's gonna be tough. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't think they know what's gonna happen. I think they're making a mistake. I can give them credit for uh, trying to execute their vision because, if anything, you know, you wanna at least go down swinging saying that, hey, I did my best. I, I did what I thought was right. And, uh, and we went down. Like, that's the very... That's the very least you want, you know? If you go down, you want to go down doing your your very damn best. I don't think, like, taking six months is the way to go. I think they would have been uh, far better off uh, releasing steady content, possibly uh, leading back the game to where they want it to be. And more, more importantly, they could have just uh, released the mode like Tavern Brawl, uh, they have in uh, Hearthstone, where they could have uh, tested out things on a, a large scale, on all the players. And more importantly, Gwent is still in open beta. It's a lot better to have a game that's uh, always evolving toward uh, Gwent 2.0, and, well, it's gonna be like quite the ride, but I think a lot of players would definitely prefer that over boring meta, same boring meta since midwinter uh, till October or something like that. That's gonna be really boring. And uh, I suppose I'm gonna bring up one more thing uh, in relation to crate, which is uh, uh, CDPR's attempt to put in more RNG into the game. Uh, the fact that uh, Gwent's main draw, main thing that really draws people in to the game is that it's the the low RNG card game. It's very skill based, and I, I would say that at first or for for some time, it's it's very satisfying. And in a always evolving meta, it's very satisfying uh, to play Gwent. You always have to think about. Who? How do I win against this guy? Who? What could he have? How do I win against this guy? What could he have? How the match is gonna go? And it's certainly true that other g card games get stale as well, but in Gwent, it's it's probably even worse because uh, Gwent is even lower RNG than every other card game out there, so the matches will play out very much the same way. And I suppose that was their big reason to add more RNG in it. <clears throat> because once you know how to play a matchup, there's not much that's gonna change. You know exactly how to play it. It feels more like a puzzle. You solve that puzzle, and keep in mind, making the game more complex makes that puzzle harder to solve, but it still has that element that if you just face the same guys all the time, you already know how to play against them, and Perhaps the order of the cards they're gonna play is gonna be slightly different, but the card they're gonna play is gonna be uh, the same, and there is really no RNG to it, so you know your game plan, and you're just gonna execute it. And uh, that could be really boring. So they need to step up complexity, and I think most of all, what I would've loved them to do, and I would've loved them to announce, is that in instead of all of this, I would've just simply went in their, in their shoes, for a content drop that they seem to not like. Some fixes. Some fixes, content drop. But more importantly, they need to spice up uh, ranked gameplay. And not with RNG, but actually game uh, uh, deck building. Like, for example, they could have had... Uh, like, different rule sets. Uh, different rule sets, they, different quests. They could also uh, keep uh, balancing the cards uh, from uh, month to month. Uh, that that actually helps a lot to making ranked interesting. 
and uh, they can also reintroduce Roblox or just add uh, like these special mechanics into the game uh, that they wanna put in. Uh, they call it. Do they have a name for it? They call it preferred row. Now, the thing is with these preferred row units is that if they just add this prefer uh, like every if they just convert every card to have preferred row or at least some cards that have preferred row and uh, like have the rows from front and back whatever would that be a good good deal would it be a, a good thing to go for the answer is we don't know because what they did in the midwinter patch what they did is that they released a lot of great cards and they kind of overwhelmed the, the player base if they just only release like like 10 create cards like who cares? Well, like five create cards, but there were a lot of create cards. Uh, that was the like the theme of the midwinter patch, so to speak. And it would have been a lot better if they just uh, like I don't know. They tried it out first. Like they're just like, hey, I like adding like five create cards. Like how does that go? Like people like it, people don't. Like how, how does it gonna go? But that's not what they went for. But I suppose I I should be criticizing what this is rather than. Uh, what we would hope to see, or at least I would like to see instead. <clears throat> and uh, what they are proposing is, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. I would like to see it. Like, if they had it, like, right now, like, sure. I I'm curious. Uh, bring it on. But it's gonna take six months and uh, nothing in between, basically. Uh, that's a tough sell. So, not sure what to say about it. I guess being six months, but really, really not much to say about this, other than that. I'm really hope, because I suppose they got a decent direction at this point, but I really hope they reconsider their way there. Because even if this takes like twice as long to execute, wouldn't it be better to keep the players interested? I would say that this is just so much better. If, if this took like one year to execute, but instead you also concentrated on keeping the, the uh, present player base happy and interested, that would be so, so much better. In my opinion. This seems a bit extreme. And they really believe in this uh, change. And I'm not saying that it's necessarily a bad one. It's, it looks like a good one, but it's such an all-in move, such a Hail Mary move, and uh, by the time it's gonna come out, the player's base is gonna drop, the fate in the game and the development is gonna drop. A lot of players are already left. And uh, honestly, this is not a, a long list of changes. So what? Fixing the coin? A little bit better art and, and like... Some some something to do with rows. That's it. Really? This could be done in like two weeks. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not a dev myself, okay? But it doesn't seem like a lot. Anyway, guys, that's it. I'm sorry if this was a little bit negative. But I'm concerned. I'm just concerned and I I don't know. I don't really like this direction, but uh, I really hope that uh, Gwent is gonna come back. If they if they stick with this direction, and I really hope not, that but if they do, I really hope that Gwent is gonna come back strong in six months. I'll be definitely checking it out uh, when uh, Thronebreaker and whatever comes out. So that's it, guys. See you next time.